navigate to thinkcentral.com, click on your subject, and in this particular case, Go Math, and you'll be taken to the login screen. Using the drop down, select your state, your district, and your school. I recommend clicking the Remember My Information so you don't have to fill in these items again. This is a hard drive thing, so it depends on the computer you're on, whether or not it will remember it. And type in the username and password that was provided to you by your district admin of this account. Prior to landing on this page, if it's the first time you've logged in, you may be required to select three security questions and provide answers for those questions. You're only required to do that on your first login. The first place we're going to go today is to the Resources tab, so click on that, and you can select your grade level, also your subject and your language if you have more than just math with us, and more than, in this case, language. Look, English, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and open our student edition. And your student edition page for page is going to look identical to the student edition that your ha students have, with a few exceptions. I clicked on the table of content, and as I go down and I look at my chapters, I can go ahead and go to a particular page just by clicking on that. And you'll notice that at point of use, I have three tools that may or may not be available to me here. Three options. The first one is Destinated Math, the Animated Math Model, and the iTools. They're available, some for every lesson and some for just specific lessons, but they'll be highlighted and active if they're available for that lesson. In addition to that, your student textbook will read to your what students as well. What do I need to find? How many crayons in the box now? Go ahead and close your student edition by just by clicking on that window. You do need to allow pop-ups in Think Central, by the way. Let's take a look at your teacher edition now. Your teacher edition also is going to look identical page for page to what you have in your print materials. So, as we look at the lessons available, Again, you'll just click on those and it should look pretty much identical. You will have an option to change this to a whiteboard view where you move all of your tools down to this situation. So a great identical to your print version. My next favorite resource is going to this GoMath ePlanner. In going to the ePlanner, it automatically gives you the table of contents. So if we were to go to that same lesson that I was previewing before, the beauty of the ePlanner is that all of your resources are available just at a click. So if I wanted to see what opening resources were available, in this case for Chapter 2, Grade 1, I could click on my print resources. Here's my show what you know. Here's my diagnostic interview assessment. All of these items are available for the opening resources. All of them are available for view or to schedule, and most of them are available in the form of assignments for your students. Isn't that great? But the next item I wanted to show you is within each lesson, in addition to print resources and the digital resources, we also have these items that are available in the digital resources. So you can click on your SOAR to success. Here's your destination math again. Here's your iTools, your animated math models. Here's an example of your Mega Math if you wanted to just view this, say, as a whole group assignment or just whole group demo. Here it is right here for you. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Lulu's Lunch Counter. But my point is with that, with this, is that you can also assign each of these items. So I love the ePlanner that's available in your resources. Additional items that you'll notice are available are your interactive whiteboards lessons and all of your activity guides and so on. Again, you can go to these this way and open just that item or you can go to that ePlanner and open them from that location. Our next segment will be creating classes and putting students in our class.